I am finally publicly ready to say I will no longer tell the public to report MLMs to the FTC. They have shown that at best they are incompetent and at worst they are blatantly corrupt and part of the problem and funded by MLMs and that's why they're not doing anything about the actual problem that destroys millions of lives every single year. Our friend, Robert Fitzpatrick, I have an interview with him on my channel. He's the author of False Profits and Ponzinomics. Robert has written this newest blog post on PyramidSchemeAlert.org. The futility of private MLM lawsuits and FTC cases. Let's check this out. This past week, a civil lawsuit in the name of consumers harmed by MLMs lost in court. That suit charged deception by the most famous of all MLM promoters, Donald Trump, over a 10-year span documented on national television, multiple speaking engagements, and online commercials. After almost five years of litigation, the evidence proved insufficient. This follows the disastrous defeat of the FTC a few months earlier against an MLM notable not for being famous like Trump, but for being utterly ordinary, exhibiting all the typical traits of MLM. Snake oil, false income claims, recruiting-based propositions, and withholding relevant financial data. The judge in that case ruled that the MLM in question was no less legitimate than all the other MLMs that the FTC treats as legitimate. The FTC's game of pretending some MLMs, which it picks arbitrarily, are pyramids, while declaring MLM is legitimate, may be finally over. Robert sums it up so well. The FTC continually pretends on a case-by-case -case basis that certain MLM companies are pyramid schemes. They say as much on their website. Some MLMs are illegal pyramid schemes. Which ones? Well, it doesn't say. Some MLMs are pyramid schemes, but not all of them, which implies that multi-level marketing as a concept isn't fraud, it's not a scam, it is legitimate. But some of them are pyramid schemes. They, they just won't tell you which ones. And they also won't tell you which ones are good, which ones are doing it right, and historically been proven to have always been doing it right. Are you confused? Let me explain to you in the simplest terms how this works using a flow chart that I made on Canva. I utilized all of my graphic design capabilities for this flow chart, let's check it out. The MLM industry, fronted by the Direct Selling Association, which is their lobbying arm. The Direct Selling Association is also in charge of governing multi-level marketing companies and making sure that they follow their very rigid rules that they have created. This is the term, the fox guarding the hen house. Anyways, the individual MLM companies via the DSA use their money. This is the first bubble up here. MLM money flows to the politicians who make up Congress. Politicians have political campaigns, those political campaigns, they accept donations. Some of those politicians go on to be in positions of power and become members of Congress. And they decide the budget and the direction of the FTC. You see the problem here. The FTC is who we are relying on to reprimand and shut down pyramid schemes and catch them and protect consumers. And yet, in a roundabout way, they are being at least partially funded by the people they are supposed to be watching over and prosecuting. And this is really only the tip of the iceberg. If you read Ponzinomics, you'll read the stories of FTC commissioners who have gone on to become paid board members or consultants or lawyers for MLM companies. And it's almost like nobody really wants to do too much in terms of litigating against MLM companies because they might be screwing themselves out of a job in the future. Or they might have their eye on one MLM company and the current chairperson of the FTC wants to crack down on that MLM company because there's been so many consumer complaints. But their predecessor, the previous chairperson who they worked under, has now gone on to become a consultant for that MLM in question. And so now it's like a, hey man, you know, I know you're looking at this company, but maybe we can come to a settlement or something, something, you know. It's a complete game. It's a complete con game. In the failed class action lawsuit against Trump, MLM was central to claims of deception, but no MLM was named as a defendant. Only Trump himself and his family were defendants. His alleged fraud, the suit claimed, was to endorse the MLMs. The main evidence that this is fraud, according to the suit, is that nearly all the people who paid money to the MLMs that he endorsed never made a profit. As if the percent of losers in all other MLMs were any less, effectively, the suit diminished the terrible truth of MLM fraud by portraying an endorser as more culpable than the endorsed MLM. So the entire case is about whether 
Trump duped these people. What were they duped into joining? A multi-level marketing scheme where 99% of people are proven to lose money because it is a calculated fraud. And then five years of time gets wasted. Who knows how much lawyer fees got spent only for it to get tossed. Not only are the victims not made whole, Trump skates away with no consequence, which I'm actually less surprised by than the overall point, which is that how is it that ACN was not brought into question in this matter at all? It, it makes no sense. It's like if you were gonna sue Cristiano Ronaldo because he wears a jersey that says Herbalife. Like how many layers of people are there before it gets to him? Why are you guys not targeting the actual root of the problem? This Trump lawsuit was obviously a political maneuver using MLM and MLM victims for partisan purposes. Its naked political goal was likely the reason the lawsuit never generated any news media Media interest in MLM. I was interviewed once and in person by the late CNN correspondent Drew Griffin in 2020 about the role of MLM in the lawsuit. Though he traveled to where I lived and brought a camera crew for the half day of interviewing about MLM, the story never aired. No other news stories about the lawsuit ever delved into the nature of MLM fraud, though MLM was at the core of the fraud claim. CNN came to interview Robert Fitzpatrick in 2020 to ask him specifically about ACN and the Trump lawsuit, and they never even aired it. Literal 1984 revisionist history. It never happened. You never saw that. That's not true. The sky is green. Up is down. War is peace. Hate is love. Here's another article. Check this out. FTC dealt big loss in attack on direct sales company. I find that so funny. Yeah, the FTC was just attacking this very legitimate health and wellness company. Whoever wrote this article, this website, Legal Dive uh, by Ed Burback. I wonder if I just search on their website, Neora. Ed Burback. Oh, so the guy writing, oh, so the guy who wrote the article was the lawyer. You can't make this shit up. Skincare and wellness company, Neora, won in federal court on all the counts brought against it potentially shaping how the FTC can go after companies it thinks are operating a pyramid scheme. This is the first time that a direct selling company has defeated the FTC on these claims in a court trial. It is also the first significant victory of its kind since Amway's 1979 administrative law defeat of the FTC. Let me think, 1979. 1989, 1999, 2009, 2019, 2024. 45 years on and the FTC has lost yet again. This is how not far at all we have come in advancing the law and actually protecting people. Imagine in 45 years, how many divorces have been caused. Imagine how many people have committed suicide. Imagine the dollar amount of losses. Imagine the mental anguish. Imagine the friendships that have been split up. I'm trying to think of something, anything that has done the level of damage that MLM has done. Importantly, the court rejected the FTC's attempt to run away from the primarily test for a pyramid scheme, the very test which the FTC and the industry had long recognized, at least until Neora. Under that test, a pyramid scheme is identified based on the extent to which commissions are tied to recruitment unrelated to the sale of a product to an ultimate user. This is very dangerous stuff here because this could potentially mean that the rules going forward may change where now this proven test to prove a pyramid scheme is now gonna be used as precedent to try to not have that hold up against future MLM companies. And this is what's been going on forever. MLM companies can say, no, we operate just like Amway. Are you gonna say that Amway is a pyramid scheme to FTC? And now they're in a pickle because they know they can't do that because the entire MLM industry has been propped up by that defeat in 1979. Until that is brought back into court and retried and argued against and the harm over the last 45 years has been presented and shown, everything the FTC is doing is completely futile. The court also rejected the assumption by the FTC and its expert that all purchases by Neora's brand partners were business expenses, constituting losses. The court summarized the weakness of that assumption with its own analogy. Quote, we may walk away poorer than we started after a trip to the grocery store, but because we obtained valuable goods or services in return for our money, the exchange is not characterized as a loss. Going to the grocery store and buying food is a human need. Of course, nobody looks at buying food as a loss. If you actually made a purchase that you wanted to buy food, and then you received food, of course you didn't lose. You got exactly the value exchange for what you wanted. In multi-level marketing, this is not the case because what people want, what people are being advertised and what they actually get are completely two different things. This is the basis of fraud, misleading people. Hey man, if you give me $100, I have some investment portfolio skill Forex thing 
where I can give you back a thousand dollars and then pretend I take their money and I never pay them anything. That was a loss. They lost the money. They thought they were getting something from me because I lied to them. That is not the same as going to a grocery store spending your money, receiving the actual goods that you intended to receive and making a fair transaction. The MLMs will defend this by saying, our distributors didn't lose the money, they're customers first and they love our products. And if they can make some money on the side, if we can help them make some money, that's fine. But these, this money that they're spending, these are not losses because these people were happy to receive the products. Do you really believe that these consumers we're so passionate about your skincare or your protein powder or your ugly leggings or your insurance that they would continually buy it month after month, filling up garages full of the crap just because they liked it so much? Or are they only doing it because they think this is going to lead to them making these millions of dollars that are routinely talked about in every Zoom meeting, every in-person meeting, at every convention where they're celebrating these milestones? Of course not. If that was the case, why even have the multi-level marketing aspect at all, the endless chain recruiting? And they'll say, well, you can't prove that the people who are buying it only bought it because they think it's gonna help them with their business and they're buying it to re-qualify for their rank and purchase order minimum requirements and blah, 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 blah. Even if you were to ask the people who are in the company. These people are in a cult. They'll say whatever to defend the MLM because they believe. So if you, the FTC, put one of the Neora distributors on the stand and said, hey, are you losing money? And it was proven that they were losing money and they had access to their bank statements that show month after month spending more than they earn with Neora. They would say, well, that's okay because I love the product and I'm a customer. And I will compare this to me and uh, Dr. Stephen Hassan talked about this in our interview. These are members of the Heaven's Gate cult filming essentially a vlog with the same haircut and the same clothes. All of them are sitting here saying, hey, mom and dad, hey, just want to let you know, this is my decision. I'm not depressed. I'm not brainwashed. I'm very happy. I'm doing this because I believe in it. Blah, 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 blah. And then they all killed themselves. So even when you're bringing supposed victims to the forefront to hear the words directly from their mouth, they themselves will sit there wide-eyed and brainwashed and tell you, yeah, I love the product. Really? You love it so much that you're willing to pay month after month to buy it again and again, more than you need. When this is a product that is more expensive and lesser quality than another brand which is more popular and more accessible to you, that you could get on Amazon or at Walmart or at Costco or at Target. I'm supposed to believe that you're just so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs about this one MLM product, which you also happen to be a distributor for, but there's no correlation there. You just really love the product. What can I do to show the truth? In rejecting the FTC's income claims, the court noted the confusion which the FTC has created with regard to its ever-changing opinion of what constitutes an improper income claim, noting that Defendants aspire to abide by the law regarding permissible income claims, and in the absence of clear guidelines on what the law is, have revisited and revised their practices over time. I have to agree once again. The FTC has vague, and I even said this in my speech in front of the FTC back in March when I spoke at the MLM conference in 2023. I said, the language on the FTC's site is vague and confusing. Those were the exact words I used. They have everything so gray and so undefined and so vague and so loosey-goosey, it allows them to both side the issue of MLM, where they say, in one breath, MLM is a legitimate practice of direct selling products and recruiting others to do the same. They'll also say, oh yeah, some MLMs are pyramid schemes. Well, which ones? How do I know? What a f***ing joke. For the first time in this Neora case, the FTC has had a mirror held up to them and has been told, okay, you guys are claiming this MLM Neora is a pyramid scheme, but they have shown that they operate just like X, Y, and Z other MLM as the rest of the industry, which you claim is legitimate. So either you're going to sit here and say that Neora is not a pyramid scheme, or you have to say that every other MLM is also a pyramid scheme. And of course, there's too much money at stake for the FTC to do that. So what did they do? They took the L. A historic case. I have to go back to Robert's blog post. He summarized it, unsurprisingly, better than anyone else could have. These events should close the door once and for all on consumer hopes or support for private lawsuits and cases brought by the FTC as useful remedies against MLM's global fraud. And I agree. I am finally publicly ready to say I will no longer tell the public to report MLMs to the FTC. I'm no longer doing it. They have shown that at best, they are incompetent 
And at worst, they are blatantly corrupt and part of the problem and funded by MLMs. And that's why they're not doing anything about the actual problem that destroys millions of lives every single year. That caused my best friend from high school and me to no longer be friends because he was brainwashed by the cult of multi-level marketing in a company called World Financial Group. Robert says, the reason such private lawsuits and government cases are ultimately futile and do not serve as remedies is they do not challenge the big lie that underpins and empowers all MLMs. The big lie, of course, is that MLM is a legitimate business or a business at all that is direct selling and that it offers a viable income opportunity. The big lie was effectively made official truth by the FTC in 1979 when it allowed an endless chain scheme to continue and called it direct selling. The lie has been main maintained by the FTC ever since, fostering a scam of global proportions and developing into a worldwide economic cult. The number of people harmed by maintaining the lie is incalculable. Direct financial losses alone are more than a trillion dollars. This one paragraph perhaps says it better than it's ever been said. The official truth is that an endless chain recruiting model of five people who recruit five people who recruit five people, as far as the FTC, the government of the United States is concerned, is that that is a legitimate means of conducting a business and that that business is somehow direct sales. You can't make this shit up. The cases and lawsuits are part of what may be called MLM's legal pretense. The legal pretense makes the lack of prosecution appear as lawfulness and legitimacy which makes the pyramid model and losses somehow acceptable. This causes many people that otherwise would recognize the obvious Ponzi scheme to not believe their own eyes, intuition, or even their personal experience. How can MLM be the fraud it appears to be if it's legal, they ask. If it were a scam, surely the government would stop it. Few understand that the lack of MLM prosecution is purchased with political influence buying. Fraud is protected and normalized by corruption, and official disregard. The lack of MLM prosecution is purchased with political influence buying. This happens on every scale of government. I even did a video and showed how my own mayor is endorsing World Financial Group. I was able to find the list of his donors and show that one of the biggest World Financial Group guys in the city was one of his biggest donors. You cannot make this shit up. Even many in the anti-MLM community have their own reasons to not challenge the big lie openly. For some, to do so puts them at odds with the FTC and other authorities. For some others, maintaining the legal pretense avoids confronting unsavory realities of political corruption and predatory business. Some want to avoid the disturbing conclusion that MLM is a gigantic, destructive cult, a frightening social reality with ramifications far beyond financial losses. The collective brain melt of everyone realizing that multi-level marketing is actually a destructive commercial cult and everyone who was in one was likely brainwashed. There would be so many people in uproar about the money they lost and no one to hold accountable. Since MLM's big lie stands as official truth, all the individual cases must prove somehow that the targeted MLMs are different from legitimate MLM. The cases and lawsuits cannot just point to the endless chain pyramid recruiting model itself and explain in simple terms how it is designed to defraud. Rather, they are forced to parse the practices one by one of the targeted MLMs to prove intentional harm. The evidence that is cited turns out to be nothing more than standard practices of all MLMs, but years must be spent documenting policies and actions and depicting them as shocking, unusual, or unique. Then the cases must also show how these individual acts harm large numbers of people, not just the people bringing the lawsuit, and further, that MLMs broad disclaimers, complex contract terms, tiny print warnings, or confusing disclosures are insufficient as if MLM might only be risky business that millions of people foolishly invest their money in. There's no way to win. There's no way to win. It should be sufficient to point to the endless chain pyramid model and go, here's the math. I have a very short, like six minute video on my channel called why making money in an MLM is impossible. That one video should be enough to hit play in a courtroom and explain why the MLM company in question that's, that's being prosecuted is a pyramid scheme by design. This has been largely impossible for plaintiffs in private suits, resulting at best in small settlements that balance meager restitution against further legal bills. Until recently, the FTC was able to prosecute and shut down a few individual MLMs by pitting the full power of the US government against smaller MLMs that could not put up much of a fight. FTC victories over inconsequential MLMs, less than one case a year or so, did not reduce MLM in size or impact. Even when court rulings seem to make certain practices, which are universal among MLMs illegal, 
The FTC never argued the practices are endemic or widespread. To the contrary, it continues to proclaim that the MLM model is legitimate, though it will not name a single MLM as an example of this legitimacy. In the rare instances of MLMs being shut down by the FTC, the perpetrators melt into the ranks of hundreds of other MLMs to continue scamming or they start up new MLMs under new names. Also, try to remember, the FTC can only bring a civil case. They cannot bring a criminal charge against a company or a person. And what are the consequences? You're not gonna, you can't put someone in jail. So what are you gonna do? Fines, settlements. You're telling people who have earned hundreds of millions or billions of dollars from scamming to pay millions in fees and fines. If you've scammed a billion dollars out of people and your consequence is to pay 200 million, well, if you've been even somewhat wise with your money, you can afford that. And what do they do? They go start another one or they go join another one. And the other MLM company will welcome them in and say, this guy's a legend in the industry and now he's bringing his talents to our company because he really believes in us because we have the greatest compensation plan in the world. We are the greatest company in the world. Alex Morton, the biggest promoter of Vima. When Vima was shut down for being an illegal pyramid scheme, what did Alex Morton do? He just went to the next one. And now he's been doing it for well over a decade. Where to turn? What do we do? It's so big, it's impossible to defeat. It's literally Big Brother. That answer begins with self-reflection and self-empowerment. Effective remedy will begin when we in the anti-MLM community drop the legal pretense and directly confront MLM as a cultic fraud, corruptly protected by government. When the cheap disguises of direct selling, income opportunity, and legitimacy are removed, the power of the truth itself will be unleashed. The shift occurs first by no longer accepting or using the language of disguise. Examples, business, industry, sales, income, legitimate, teams, network, etc. Declaring the full truth of MLM as a cultic fraud will break the pattern of millions of consumers losing in one MLM only to join another, thinking it is one of the legitimate ones. It will hasten the time when anti-MLM moves from complaint, which is valid, to power, which is necessary. The process is already underway. We now, for the first time in history, have access to controlling the narrative that they still don't have. One guy in his apartment making YouTube documentaries about multi-level marketing companies can get a million views in a week. You know, there's the saying, every minute there's a sucker born. Every year, millions of students are graduating high school and turning 18. And every year inflation rises and the prospect of owning a house goes down and the prospect of being able to afford to have children goes down and the prospect of being able to live comfortably from working a legitimate job and not scamming and not committing fraud and not selling drugs goes down. And this bolsters the confidence of the people pushing the schemes, the confidence men with the fake jewelry and the rented cars and the rented Airbnbs who will gladly go and tell these kids that they can make a million dollars if they just follow their example. It's almost impossible to think that you could change the mind of an 18 year old boy who has just been bamboozled and has stars in his eyes because some older, handsome, charismatic guy told him, yeah, this is how we're gonna get all the girls and make all the money. Have you ever seen Wolf of Wall Street? You know, as I grow, I wanna be able to go and do speaking engagements at high schools and universities and TED Talks and gain a wider platform to spread the truth about multi-level marketing. And they've tried to silence me so hard. I'm on the other side of the world in a place where I do not speak the language and I don't know anybody. And I've done that, why? Because this cult, yes, it is a cult of multi-level marketing, has hired private investigators to find out where I live and knock on my door and go find out where my dad lives and go to my dad's house looking for me, asking if I live there. What legitimate company would ever do that? Because if something is legitimate, it will stand up to scrutiny. And if it's not, well, then that's when you need to go about silencing people who expose the truth. If they don't kill me before I'm able to you know, defeat it, then, then I will continue to fight for a future where my children and my grandchildren don't run the risk of being told upon high school graduation, hey, I like those shoes. You ever thought about making extra income on the side?